What is cloning? A clone is a group of cells derived from the original cell by fission, one cell dividing into two cells. Or by mitosis, cell nucleus division with each chromosome splitting into two. Cloning perpetuates an existing organism's genetic makeup. Gardeners have been making clones of plants for centuries by Taking cuttings of plants to make genetically identical copies. For plants that refuse to grow from cuttings, or for the animal world. Modern scientific techniques have greatly extended the range of cloning. The technique for plants starts with taking a cutting of a plant that best satisfies the criteria for reproductive success beauty, or some other standard. Since all of the plant cells contain the genetic information from which the entire plant can be reconstructed, the cutting can be taken from any part of the plant. Placed in a culture medium having nutritious chemicals and a growth hormone. The cells in the cutting divide, doubling in size every six weeks until the mass of cells produces small white globular points called embryoids. These embryoids develop roots, or shoots, and begin to look like tiny plants. Transplanted into compost, these plants grow into exact copies of the parent plant. The whole process takes 18 months. This process, called tissue culture, has been used to make clones of oil palm, asparagus, pineapples, strawberries, Brussels sprouts, cauliflower, bananas, carnations, ferns, and others. Besides making highly productive copies of the best plant available, this method controls viral diseases that are passed through normal seed generations. What is cloning? A clone is a group of cells derived from the original cell by fission, one cell dividing into two cells. Or by mitosis, cell nucleus division with each chromosome splitting into two. Cloning perpetuates an existing organism's genetic makeup. Gardeners have been making clones of plants for centuries by taking cuttings of plants to make genetically identical copies. For plants that refuse to grow from cuttings, or for the animal world. Modern scientific techniques have greatly extended the range of cloning. The technique for plants starts with taking a cutting of a plant that best satisfies the criteria for reproductive success, beauty, or some other standard. Since all of the plant cells contain the genetic information from which the entire plant can be reconstructed, the cutting can be taken from any part of the plant. Placed in a culture medium having nutritious chemicals and a growth hormone. The cells in the cutting divide, doubling in size every six weeks until. The mass of cells produces small white globular points called embryoids. These embryoids develop roots, or shoots, and begin to look like tiny plants. Transplanted into compost, these plants grow into exact copies of the parent plant. The whole process takes 18 months. This process, called tissue culture, 
has been used to make clones of oil palm. Asparagus, pineapples, strawberries, Brussels sprouts, cauliflower, bananas, carnations, ferns, and others. Besides making highly productive copies of the best plant available. This method controls viral diseases that are passed through normal seed generations. What was the first animal to be successfully cloned? In 1970 the British molecular biologist John B. Gordon, 1933, cloned a frog. He transplanted the nucleus of an intestinal cell from a tadpole into a frog's egg that had had its nucleus removed. The egg developed into an adult frog that had the tadpole's genome in all of its cells and was therefore a clone of the tadpole. What was the first animal to be successfully cloned? In 1970 the British molecular biologist John B. Gordon, 1933, cloned a frog. He transplanted the nucleus of an intestinal cell from a tadpole into a frog's egg that had had its nucleus removed. The egg developed into an adult frog that had the tadpole's genome in all of its cells and was therefore a clone of the tadpole. Are any bacteria visible to the naked eye? Apulopiscium fischelsoni, which lives in the gut of the brown surgeon fish. Acanthurus nigrofuscus, is visible to naked eye. It was first identified in 1985 and mistakenly classified as a protozoan. Later studies analyzed the organism's genetic material and proved it to be a bacterium of unprecedented size. Inches, 0.38 millimeters, in diameter, or about the size of a period in a small print book. When were chromosomes first observed? Chromosomes were observed as early as 1872, when Edmund Russo 1841-1897, described seeing items that resembled small rods during cell division, he named the rod stabchen. Edouard van Beneden, 1846-1910, used the term batonet in 1875 to describe nuclear duplication. The following year, 1876, Edouard Balbiani, 1825-1899, described that at the time of cell division the nucleus dissolved into a collection of batonets etroids, narrow little rods. Walther Fleming, 1843-1905 Discovered that the chromosomal threads or phaeton split longitudinally during mitosis. What are some examples of genetic engineering in animals and microbes?
One of the earliest applications of biotechnology was the genetic engineering of a growth hormone. Bovine GH, produced naturally in the bovine pituitary. Bovine GH can increase milk production in lactating cows. Using biotechnology, scientists bioengineered the gene that controls bovine GH production into E. coli, grew the bacteria in fermentation chambers, and thus produced large quantities of bovine GH. The bioengineered bovine GH when injected into lactating cows resulted in an increase of up to 20% in national milk production. Using bovine GH, farmers are able to stabilize milk production in their herds. Avoiding fluctuations in production levels. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration, FDA. Approved use of recombinant bovine growth hormone in 1993 after 10 years of study. A similar regimen was adapted using the pig equivalent of growth hormone, porcine GH. Injected in pigs, porcine GH reduced back fat and increased muscle, meat, gain. Pig growth hormone has been test marketed in a select population with no ill effects. However, it has not yet been approved by the FDA. The first transgenic animal available as a food source on a large scale was the salmon. Which reached US food markets in 2001, following rigid evaluations of consumer and environmental safety. These salmon have the capability of growing from egg to market size, 6 to 10 pounds, in 18 months. As compared to conventional fish breeding, which takes up to 36 months to bring a fish to market size. The use of transgenic salmon can help reduce overfishing of wild salmon stocks. What was the first animal to be successfully cloned? In 1970 the British molecular biologist John B. Gordon, 1933, cloned a frog. He transplanted the nucleus of an intestinal cell from a tadpole into a frog's egg that had had its nucleus removed. The egg developed into an adult frog that had the tadpole's genome in all of its cells and was therefore a clone of the tadpole. What is the average size of a gene? The average size of a vertebrate gene is about 30,000 base pairs. Bacteria, because their sequences contain only coding material, have smaller genes of about 1,000 base pairs each. Human genes are in the 20,000 to 50,000 base pairs range. Although sizes greater than 100,000 have been suggested as well. How many types of RNA are found in eukaryotic cells? There are five major types of RNA found in eukaryotic cells, 1. Heterogeneous nuclear RNA, HNRNA. 2. Messenger RNA, MRNA. 3. Transfer RNA. TRNA, 
4, ribosomal RNA, rRNA, and 5, small nuclear RNA. The primary types of RNA are mRNA, tRNA, and rRNA. Messenger RNA, a single strand copied from a DNA strand. Carries the genetic code from the DNA to the site of protein synthesis on the ribosomes. The most abundant type of RNA, rRNA, participates in protein synthesis in the ribosomes. Transfer, tRNA, is the translation molecule. Each tRNA molecule carries a specific anticodon, picks up a specific amino acid, and conveys the amino acid to the appropriate codon on mRNA. What are the characteristics of the protists? Protists are a diverse group of organisms. All protists are eukaryotic. Many are unicellular, but they may be multicellular, multinucleate, or exhibit a colonial organization. Although most are microscopic, some are much larger, reaching lengths of nearly 200 feet, 60 meters. In early, traditional taxonomic schemes, they were united on the basis of being neither plant nor animal nor fungus. Current evidence suggests that protists exhibit characteristics of the plant, animal, and fungi kingdoms. Why are some species more commonly used for genetic studies than others? Species with a relatively small genome, with a short generation time from seed to seed. And that are adaptable to living in captivity are appealing as experimental organisms. Even though many. Of these species bear little physical resemblance to humans. They do share part of our genome and so can answer some of the questions we have about genetic inheritance and gene expression. When was RNA discovered? By the 1940s it was known that there was another kind of nucleic acid other than DNA, this one called RNA. Phoebus Levine, 1869-1940, a Russian-born chemist. Further refined the work of Albrecht Kossel, 1853-1927. Kossel was awarded the Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine in 1910 for determining the composition of nucleon. At the time of Kossel's work, it was not clear that DNA and RNA were different substances. In 1909, Levine isolated the carbohydrate portion of nucleic acid from yeast and identified it as the pentose sugar ribose. In 1929, he succeeded in identifying the carbohydrate portion of the nucleic acid isolated from the thymus of an animal. It was also a pentose sugar, but it differed from ribose in that it lacked one oxygen atom. Levine called the new substance deoxyribose. These studies define the chemical differences between DNA and RNA by their sugar molecules.
Where are bacteria found? Bacteria inhabit every place on Earth including places where no other organism can survive. Bacteria have been detected as high as 20 miles, 32 kilometers. Above the Earth and 7 miles, 11 kilometers, deep in the waters of the Pacific Ocean. They are found in extreme environments, such as the Arctic tundra, boiling hot springs, and our bodies. Heat-tolerant bacteria have been found at a gold mine in South Africa at a level of 2.17 miles. 3.5 kilometers, below Earth's surface where the temperature in the mine was 149 degrees Fahrenheit 65 degrees Celsius. Who first proposed the Kingdom Protista? The German zoologist Ernst Haeckel, 1834-1919, first proposed the Kingdom Protista in 1866. For the newly discovered organisms that were neither plant nor animal. The term protest is derived from the Greek term protistos, meaning the very first. How quickly do bacteria reproduce? Bacteria can reproduce very rapidly in favorable environments. In both laboratory cultures and natural habitats. The time required for a bacterial population to double is called generation time. For example, under optimal conditions, Escherichia coli can divide every 17 minutes. A laboratory culture started with a single cell can produce a colony of 107 to 108 bacteria in about 12 hours. How are bacteria cultured? Bacteria are usually cultured in petri dishes that contain a culture medium, usually nutrient agar. Petri dishes were developed in 1887 by Julius Richard Petri, 1852-1921. A member of Robert Cox Laboratory. The top of the dish is larger than the bottom so that when the dish is closed a strong seal is created. Preventing contamination of the culture. Agar was developed as a culture media for bacteria by Robert Cook. Cook was interested in the isolation of bacteria in pure culture. Because isolation was difficult in liquid media. He began to study ways in which bacteria could be grown on solid media. After sterile, boiled potatoes proved unsatisfactory, a better alternative was suggested by Fanny E. Hesse, 1850-1934, the wife of Walther Hesse, 1846-1911, who was one of Cox's assistants. She suggested that agar, which she had used to thicken sauces, jams, and jellies, be used to solidify liquid nutrient broth. Agar is generally inexpensive and, once gelled, 
does not melt until reaching a temperature of 212 degrees Fahrenheit 100 degrees Celsius. If 1 to 2 grams of agar are added to 100 milliliter of nutrient broth, it produces a solid medium that is not degraded by most bacteria. Stacks of petri dishes culturing bacteria are one of the most common items in a microbiology laboratory. What was the first commercial use of genetic engineering? Recombinant DNA technology was first used commercially to produce human insulin from bacteria. In 1982, genetically engineered insulin was approved for use by diabetics. Insulin is normally produced by the pancreas. And the pancreas of slaughtered animals such as swine or sheep was used as a source of insulin. To provide a reliable source of human insulin. Researchers obtained DNA from human cells carrying the gene with the information for making human insulin. Researchers made a copy of DNA carrying this insulin gene and moved it into a bacterium. When the bacterium was grown in the lab, the microbe split from one cell into two cells. And both cells got a copy of the insulin gene. Those two microbes grew, then divided into four. Those four into eight the 8 into 16, and so forth. With each cell division, the two new cells each had a copy of the gene for human insulin. And because the cells had a copy of the genetic recipe card for insulin, they could make the insulin protein. Which organism has the largest number of chromosomes? Ophioglossum reticulatum, a species of fern, has the largest number of chromosomes with more than 1,260, 630 pairs. What are Cox postulates? Robert Cook was the first to identify that various microorganisms are the cause of disease. His four basic criteria of bacteriology, known as Cox postulates, are still considered fundamental principles of bacteriology. The characteristics are as follows, 1, the organism must be found in tissues of animals that have been infected with the disease, rather than in disease-free animals. 2, the organism must be isolated from the diseased animal and grown in a pure culture or in vitro. 3. The cultured organism must be able to be transferred to a healthy animal, which will show signs of the disease after having been exposed to the organism. 4. The organism must be able to be isolated from the infected animal. Cook was awarded the Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine in 1905 for his research on tuberculosis. Which protist is an indicator of polluted water?
Euglenoids are unicellular flagellates, many euglenoids are capable of photosynthesis and are autotrophic. They are commonly found in freshwater ponds and puddles. Others do not carry on photosynthesis and are heterotrophic. Often found in water with large amounts of organic material. Euglenoids frequently serve as bioindicators and are found in large numbers in polluted waters. How dangerous is Clostridium botulinum? The bacterium Clostridium botulinum can grow in food products and produce a toxin called botulinum. The most toxic substance known. Microbiologists estimate that 1 gram of this toxin can kill 14 million adults. This bacterium can withstand boiling water, 212 degrees Fahrenheit or 100 degrees Celsius. But is killed in 5 minutes in 248 degrees Fahrenheit 120 degrees Celsius. This tolerance makes Clostridium botulinum a serious concern for people who can vegetables at home. If home canning is not done properly, this bacterium will grow in the anaerobic conditions of the sealed container and create extremely poisonous food. The endospores of Clostridium botulinum can germinate in poorly prepared canned goods. So individuals should never eat food from a can that appears swollen. As it is a sign that the can has become filled with gas released during germination. Consuming food from a can containing endospores that have undergone. Germination can lead to nerve paralysis, severe vomiting, and even death. What is genetic engineering? Genetic engineering, also known popularly as molecular cloning or gene cloning, is the artificial recombination of nucleic acid molecules in the test tube, their insertion into a virus. Bacterial plasmid, or other vector system, and the subsequent incorporation of the chimeric molecules into a host organism in which they are capable of continued propagation. The construction of such molecules has also been termed gene manipulation because it usually involves the production of novel genetic combinations by biochemical means. Genetic engineering techniques include cell fusion and the use of recombinant DNA, RNA, or gene splicing. In cell fusion, the tough outer membranes of sperm and egg cells are stripped off by enzymes. And then the fragile cells are mixed and combined with the aid of chemicals or viruses. The result may be the creation of a new life form from two species. Recombinant DNA techniques transfer a specific genetic activity from one organism to the next through the use of bacterial plasmids. Small circular pieces of DNA lying outside the main bacterial chromosome. And enzymes, such as restriction endonucleases, which cut the DNA strands, reverse transcriptase which makes a DNA strand from an RNA strand, DNA ligase, which joins DNA strands together. And tag polymerase, which can make a double-stranded DNA molecule from a single-stranded primer molecule. 
the process begins with the isolation of suitable DNA strands and fragmenting them. After these fragments are combined with vectors, they are carried into bacterial cells where the DNA fragments are spliced onto plasmid DNA that has been opened up. These hybrid plasmids are now mixed with host cells to form transformed cells. Since only some of the transformed cells will exhibit the desired characteristic or gene activity. The transformed cells are separated and grown individually in cultures. This methodology has been successful in producing large quantities of hormones. Such as insulin, for the biotechnology industry. However, it is more difficult to transform animal and plant cells. Yet the technique exists to make plants resistant to diseases and to make animals grow larger. Because genetic engineering interferes with the processes of heredity and can alter the genetic structure of our own species. There is much concern over the ethical ramifications of such power. As well as the possible health and ecological consequences of the creation of these bacterial forms. Some applications of genetic engineering in the various fields are listed below. Agriculture crops having larger yields, disease and drought resistancy. Bacterial sprays to prevent crop damage from freezing temperatures, and livestock improvement through changes in animal traits. Industry use of bacteria to convert old newspaper and wood chips into sugar. Oil and toxin absorbing bacteria for oil spill or toxic waste cleanups, and yeasts to accelerate wine fermentation. Medicine alteration of human genes to eliminate disease, experimental stage. Faster and more economical production of vital human substances to alleviate deficiency and disease symptoms. But not to cure them, such as insulin, interferon. Cancer therapy, vitamins, human growth hormone eta, antibodies, vaccines, and antibiotics. Research modification of gene structure in medical research, especially cancer research. Food processing renin, enzyme, in cheese aging. How much DNA is in a typical human cell? If the DNA in a single human cell were stretched out and laid end to end, it would measure approximately 6.5 feet, 2 meter. The average human body contains 10 to 20 billion miles. 16 to 32 billion kilometers of DNA distributed among trillions of cells. If the total DNA in all the cells from one human were unraveled, it would stretch to the sun and back more than 500 times. How have genetics been linked to the Salem witch trials held in 1692 in Salem, Massachusetts? It is believed that some of the early English colonists that settled in New England may have had Huntington's disease. Huntington's disease is an autosomal dominant disorder characterized by late onset symptoms. Age 40 to 50, such as mild behavioral and neurological changes. 
as the disease progresses, psychiatric problems develop that frequently lead to insanity. Early descriptions of the odd behavior included names such as that disorder and St. Vitus's dance to describe involuntary muscle jerks and twitches. Many of the witches who were on trial for possession may have had Huntington's disease, which causes uncontrollable movements and odd behavior. However, if the protein product is not known, the task is more difficult. An example of this would be that of finding the susceptibility gene for late-onset Alzheimer's disease. DNA samples would be collected from family members of a patient with late-onset Alzheimer's disease. The DNA would be cut with restriction endonucleases. And restriction fragment length polymorphisms, RFLPs, would be compared among the family. If certain RFLPs are only found when the disease gene is present, then it is assumed that the distinctive fragments are markers for the gene. Geneticists then sequence the DNA in the same area of the chromosome where the marker was found. Looking for potential gene candidates. How did scientists decide that DNA was the genetic material for all cellular organisms? The proof that the material basis for a gene is DNA came from the work of Oswald T. Avery, 1877 to 1955, Colin M. McLeod, 1909-1972, and Mocklin McCarty. 1911-2005, in a paper published in 1944. This group of scientists followed the work of Frederick Griffith. 1879-1941, in order to discover what causes non-lethal bacteria to transform to a lethal strain. Using specific enzymes, all parts of the S, lethal, bacteria were degraded. Including the sugar-like coat, the proteins, and the RNA. The degradation of these substances by enzymes did not affect the transformation process. Finally, when the lethal bacteria were exposed to DNase, an enzyme that destroys DNA. All transformation activity ceased. The transforming factor was DNA. What is meant by the modern era of genetics? Mendel's work was really not appreciated until advances in cytology enabled scientists to better study cells. In 1900, Hugo de Vries, 1848-1935, of Holland, Karl Korins, 1864-1933, of Germany, and Eric von Tschirmich. 1871-1962, of Austria examined Mendel's original 1865 paper and repeated the experiments. In the following years chromosomes were discovered as discrete structures within the nucleus of a cell. In 1917, Thomas Hunt Morgan, 1866-1945, a fruit fly geneticist at Columbia University extended Mendel's findings to the structure and function of chromosomes. This and subsequent findings in the 1950s were the beginning of the modern era of genetics.
What is the difference between DNA and RNA? DNA, deoxyribonucleic acid, is a nucleic acid formed from a repetition of simple building blocks called nucleotides. The nucleotides consist of phosphate, PO4, sugar, deoxyribose, and a base that is either adenine, A, thymine, T, guanine, G, or cytosine, C. In a DNA molecule, this basic unit is repeated in a double helix. Structure made from two chains of nucleotides linked between the bases. The links are either between A and T or between G and C. The structure of the bases does not allow other kinds of links. The famous double helix structure resembles a twisted ladder. The 1962 Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine was awarded to James Watson, Francis Crick, and Maurice Wilkins, 1916-2004, for determining the molecular structure of DNA. RNA, ribonucleic acid, is also a nucleic acid. But it consists of a single chain and the sugar is ribose rather than deoxyribose. The bases are the same except that the thymine, T, which appears in DNA, is replaced by another base called uracil, U, which links only to adenine, A. What was the Human Genome Project, HGP, and what were its goals? The HGP was begun in 1990 as a 13-year effort and completed in 2003. According to the official HGP website, HTTP colon slash slash www. Doganomes. What are the components of a gene? The term gene describes a section of DNA that will be used as a template to build a strand of RNA or protein. In addition to this information, each gene also contains a promoter region, which indicates where the coding information actually begins, and a terminator, which delineates the end of the gene. How many chromosomes are in a human body cell? A human being normally has 46 chromosomes, 23 pairs, in all but the sex cells. Half of each pair is inherited from the mother's egg, the other, from the father's sperm. When the sperm and egg unite in fertilization, they create a single cell, or zygote, with 46 chromosomes. When cell division occurs, the 46 chromosomes are duplicated, this process is repeated billions of times over. With each of the cells containing the identical set of chromosomes. Only the gametes, or sex cells, are different in their cell division. The members of each pair of chromosomes are separated and distributed to different cells. 
Each gamete has only 23 chromosomes. What is cloning? A clone is a group of cells derived from the original cell by fission, one cell dividing into two cells. Or by mitosis, cell nucleus division with each chromosome splitting into two. Cloning perpetuates an existing organism's genetic makeup. Gardeners have been making clones of plants for centuries by taking cuttings of plants to make genetically identical copies. For plants that refuse to grow from cuttings, or for the animal world. Modern scientific techniques have greatly extended the range of cloning. The technique for plants starts with taking a cutting of a plant that best satisfies the criteria for reproductive success beauty, or some other standard. Since all of the plant cells contain the genetic information from which the entire plant can be reconstructed, the cutting can be taken from any part of the plant. Placed in a culture medium having nutritious chemicals and a growth hormone. The cells in the cutting divide, doubling in size every six weeks until the mass of cells produces small white globular points called embryoids. These embryoids develop roots, or shoots, and begin to look like tiny plants. Transplanted into compost, these plants grow into exact copies of the parent plant. The whole process takes 18 months. This process, called tissue culture, has been used to make clones of oil palm, asparagus, pineapples, strawberries, Brussels sprouts, cauliflower, bananas, carnations, ferns, and others. Besides making highly productive copies of the best plant available, this method controls viral diseases that are passed through normal seed generations. How do bacteria reproduce? Bacteria reproduce asexually, by binary fission a process in which one cell divides into two similar cells. First the circular, bacterial DNA replicates. And then a transverse wall is formed by an ingrowth of both plasma membrane and the cell wall. How did the protist fight of Thura in Festin's influence Irish history? Fight of Thura in Festin's one of the potato's most lethal pathogens, causes the late blight of potato disease. This pathogen was responsible for the Irish potato famine of 1845 to 1849. P. Infestans causes the leaves and stem of the potato plant to decay. Eventually causing the tuber to stop growing. In addition, the tubers are attacked by the pathogen and rot. It has been estimated that during the potato famine 1.5 million Irish people emigrated from their country and moved to various parts of the world, but most immigrated to the United States. An estimated 400,000 people perished during the famine due to malnutrition.
How are chromosomes assembled? Chromosomes are assembled on a scaffold of proteins, called hist ones, that allow DNA to be tightly packed. There are five major types of hist ones, all of which have a positive charge. The positive charges of the hist ones attract the negative charges on the phosphates of DNA. Thus holding the DNA in contact with the hist ones. These thicker strands of DNA and proteins are called chromatin. Chromatin is then packed to form the familiar structure of a chromosome. During mitosis, chromosomes acquire characteristic shapes that allow them to be counted and identified. How are genes physically found in a specific genome? Finding one gene out of a possible 30,000 to 40,000 genes in the human genome is a difficult task. However, the process is made easier if the protein product of the gene is known. As an example, if a researcher is looking to find the gene for mouse hemoglobin, he or she would isolate the hemoglobin from mouse blood and determine the amino acid sequence. The amino acid sequence could then be used as a template to generate the nucleotide sequence. Working backward again, a complementary DNA probe to the sequence would be used to identify DNA molecules with the same sequence from the entire mouse genomic library. What is a genome? A genome is the complete set of genes inherited from one's parents. Genome sizes vary from one species to another. The final number for humans is yet to be determined. What are the major groups of organisms in the kingdom Protista? There is little agreement among taxonomists on how to classify the protists. But they may be conveniently divided into seven general groups that Share certain characteristics of locomotion, nutrition, and reproduction. What is the most famous human pedigree? The sex-linked pattern of the inheritance of haemophilia within the royal family of Queen Victoria. 1819-1901, and Prince Albert, 1819-1861, is perhaps the most famous human pedigree. Where is RNA formed? All RNA is formed in the nucleus, eukaryotic cells, or in the nucleoid region, prokaryotic cells. The principal enzyme responsible for RNA synthesis is RNA polymerase.
What was the first mammal to be successfully cloned? The first mammal cloned from adult cells was Dolly, a newborn zero on July 5. 1996 Dolly was born in a research facility in Scotland. Ian Wilmoot, 1944, led the team of biologists that removed a nucleus from a mammary cell of an adult ewe and transplanted it into an enucleated egg extracted from a second ewe. Electrical pulses were administered to fuse the nucleus with its new host. When the egg began to divide and develop into an embryo, it was transplanted into a surrogate mother ewe. Dolly was the genetic twin of the ewe that donated the mammary cell nucleus. On April 13, 1998, Dolly gave birth to Bonnie the product of a normal mating between Dolly and a Welsh mountain ram. This event demonstrates that Dolly was a healthy, fertile sheep, able to produce healthy offspring. Dolly was euthanized on February 14, 2003. Because she had severe arthritis and a progressive lung disease that was caused by the retrovirus JSRV. What was the first mammal to be successfully cloned? The first mammal cloned from adult cells was Dolly, a newborn zero on July 5. 1996 Dolly was born in a research facility in Scotland. Ian Wilmoot 1944, led the team of biologists that removed a nucleus from a mammary cell of an adult ewe and transplanted it into an enucleated egg extracted from a second ewe. Electrical pulses were administered to fuse the nucleus with its new host. When the egg began to divide and develop into an embryo, it was transplanted into a surrogate mother ewe. Dolly was the genetic twin of the ewe that donated the mammary cell nucleus. On April 13, 1998, Dolly gave birth to Bonnie the product of a normal mating between Dolly and a Welsh mountain ram. This event demonstrates that Dolly was a healthy, fertile sheep, able to produce healthy offspring. Dolly was euthanized on February 14, 2003. Because she had severe arthritis and a progressive lung disease that was caused by the retrovirus JSRV. What is evolution? Although it was originally defined in the 19th century as descent with modification. Evolution is currently described as the change in frequency of genetic traits. Also known as the allelic frequency, within populations over time. What is evolution? Although it was originally defined in the 19th century as descent with modification. Evolution is currently described as the change in frequency of genetic traits. Also known as the allelic frequency, within populations over time.
What were early ideas on evolution? While some Greek philosophers had theories about the gradual evolution of life, Plato, 427 to 347 B. C. E. and Aristotle, 384 to 322 B. C. E. were not among them. In the 1700s, natural theology. The explanation of life as the manifestation of the Creator's plan, held sway in Europe. This idea was the motive force behind the work of Carl Linnaeus, 1707-1778, who was the first to classify all known living things by kingdom. Also popular prior to the work of Charles Darwin, 1809-1882, were the theories of special creation. Creationism, blending inheritance. That offspring were always the mixture of the traits of their two parents, and acquired characteristics. What were early ideas on evolution? While some Greek philosophers had theories about the gradual evolution of life, Plato, 427 to 347 B. C. E. and Aristotle, 384 to 322 B. C. E. were not among them. In the 1700s, natural theology. The explanation of life as the manifestation of the Creator's plan, held sway in Europe. This idea was the motive force behind the work of Carl Linnaeus, 1707-1778, who was the first to classify all known living things by kingdom. Also popular prior to the work of Charles Darwin, 1809-1882, were the theories of special creation. Creationism, blending inheritance. That offspring were always the mixture of the traits of their two parents, and acquired characteristics. What is Lamarckian evolution? The French biologist Jean-Baptiste de Lamarck, 1744-1829, is credited as the first person to propose a theory that attempts to explain how and why evolutionary change occurs in living organisms. The mechanism Lamarck proposed is known as the inheritance of acquired characteristics meaning that what individuals experience during their lifetime will be passed along to their offspring as genetic traits. This is sometimes referred to as the theory of use and disuse. A classic example of this would be the giraffe's neck. Lamarckian evolution would predict that as giraffes stretch their next to reach higher branches on trees, their necks grow longer. As a result, this increase in neck length will be transmitted to egg and sperm such that the offspring of giraffes whose necks have grown will also have long necks. While Lamarck's idea was analytically based on available data, giraffes have long necks and give birth to offspring with long necks as well, he did not know that. In general, environmental factors do not change genetic sequences in such a direct fashion.
What is Lamarckian evolution? The French biologist Jean-Baptiste de Lamarck, 1744-1829, is credited as the first person to propose a theory that attempts to explain how and why evolutionary change occurs in living organisms. The mechanism Lamarck proposed is known as the inheritance of acquired characteristics. Meaning that what individuals experience during their lifetime will be passed along to their offspring as genetic traits. This is sometimes referred to as the theory of use and disuse. A classic example of this would be the giraffe's neck. Lamarckian evolution would predict that as giraffes stretch their necks to reach higher branches on trees, their necks grow longer. As a result, this increase in neck length will be transmitted to egg and sperm such that the offspring of giraffes whose necks have grown will also have long necks. While Lamarck's idea was analytically based on available data, giraffes have long necks and give birth to offspring with long necks as well, he did not know that. In general, environmental factors do not change genetic sequences in such a direct fashion. Who was Charles Darwin? The theory of natural selection proposed by Charles Darwin 1809 to 1882 revolutionized all aspects of natural science. Darwin was born into a family of physicians and planned to follow his father and grandfather in that profession. Unable to stand the sight of blood. He studied divinity at Cambridge and received a degree from the university in 1830. Who was Charles Darwin? The theory of natural selection proposed by Charles Darwin 1809-1882, revolutionized all aspects of natural science. Darwin was born into a family of physicians and planned to follow his father and grandfather in that profession. Unable to stand the sight of blood. He studied divinity at Cambridge and received a degree from the university in 1830. What were the Beagle Voyages? The HMS Beagle was a naval survey ship that left England in December. 1831 to chart the coastal waters of Patagonia, Peru, and Chile. On a voyage that would last five years, Darwin's job as unpaid companion to the captain on board the Beagle allowed him to satisfy his interests in natural history. On its way to Asia, the ship spent time in the Galapagos Islands off the coast of Ecuador. Darwin's observations there caused him to generate his theory of natural selection. What were the Beagle Voyages?
The HMS Beagle was a naval survey ship that left England in December. 1831 to chart the coastal waters of Patagonia, Peru, and Chile. On a voyage that would last five years, Darwin's job as unpaid companion to the captain on board the Beagle allowed him to satisfy his interests in natural history. On its way to Asia, the ship spent time in the Galapagos Islands off the coast of Ecuador. Darwin's observations there caused him to generate his theory of natural selection. What is the significance of Darwin's finches? In his studies on the Galapagos Islands, Charles Darwin observed patterns in animals and plants that suggested to him that species changed over time to produce new species. Darwin collected several species of finches. The species were all similar, but each had developed beaks and bills specialized to catch food in a different way. Some species had heavy bills for cracking open tough seeds. Others had slender bills for catching insects. One species used twigs to probe for insects in tree cavities. All the species resembled one species of South American finch. In fact, all the plants and animals of the Galapagos Islands were similar to those of the nearby. 600 miles slash 1 comma 000 kilometers away, coast of South America. Darwin felt that the simplest explanation for the similarity was that a few species of plants and animals from South America must have migrated to the Galapagos Islands. These few plants and animals then changed during the years they lived in their new home. Giving rise to many new species. Evolutionary theory proposes that species change over time in response to environmental challenges. What is the significance of Darwin's finches? In his studies on the Galapagos Islands, Charles Darwin observed patterns in animals and plants that suggested to him that species changed over time to produce new species. Darwin collected several species of finches. The species were all similar, but each had developed beaks and bills specialized to catch food in a different way. Some species had heavy bills for cracking open tough seeds. Others had slender bills for catching insects. One species used twigs to probe for insects in tree cavities. All the species resembled one species of South American finch. In fact, all the plants and animals of the Galapagos Islands were similar to those of the nearby. 600 miles slash 1 comma 000 kilometers away, coast of South America. Darwin felt that the simplest explanation for the similarity was that a few species of plants and animals from South America must have migrated to the Galapagos Islands. These few plants and animals then changed during the years they lived in their new home, giving rise to many new species.
Evolutionary theory proposes that species change over time in response to environmental challenges. How did geology influence Darwin? While traveling aboard the HMS Beagle, Charles Darwin read the principles of geology by Charles Lyell, 1797-1875. Catastrophism was the popular theory of the time about the forces driving geological change. Lyell's theory suggested that geologic change was not solely the result of random catastrophes. Rather, he proposed that geologic formations were most often the result of everyday occurrences like storms, waves, volcanic eruptions, and earthquakes that could be observed within an individual lifetime. This idea, that the same geologic processes at work today were also present during our evolutionary past, is known as uniformitarian. This conclusion also led Lyell and, before him, James Hutton, 1726 to 1797, to suggest that Earth must be much older than the previously accepted age of 6,000 years. Because these uniform processes would have required many millions of years to generate the structures he observed. Reading Lyell's work gave Darwin a new perspective as he traveled through South America and sought a mechanism by which he could explain his thoughts on evolution. How did geology influence Darwin? While traveling aboard the HMS Beagle, Charles Darwin read the principles of geology by Charles Lyell, 1797-1875. Catastrophism was the popular theory of the time about the forces driving geological change. Lyell's theory suggested that geologic change was not solely the result of random catastrophes. Rather, he proposed that geologic formations were most often the result of everyday occurrences like storms, waves, volcanic eruptions, and earthquakes that could be observed within an individual lifetime. This idea, that the same geologic processes at work today were also present during our evolutionary past, is known as uniformitarian. This conclusion also led Lyell and, before him, James Hutton, 1726 to 1797, to suggest that Earth must be much older than the previously accepted age of 6,000 years. Because these uniform processes would have required many millions of years to generate the structures he observed. Reading Lyell's work gave Darwin a new perspective as he traveled through South America and sought a mechanism by which he could explain his thoughts on evolution. Who was Alfred Russell Wallace? Alfred Russell Wallace, 1823-1913, was a naturalist whose work was presented with Charles Darwin's at the Linnean Society of London in 1858, after extensive travels in the Amazon basin. Wallace independently came to the same conclusions as Darwin on 
the significance of natural selection in driving the diversification of species. Wallace also worked as a natural history specimen collector in Indonesia. Wallace, like Darwin, also read the work of Thomas Malthus, 1766-1834. During an attack of malaria in Indonesia, Wallace made the connection between the Malthusian concept of the struggle for existence and a mechanism for change within populations. From this, Wallace wrote the essay that was eventually presented with Darwin's work in 1858. Who was Alfred Russell Wallace? Alfred Russell Wallace, 1823-1913, was a naturalist whose work was presented with Charles Darwin's at the Linnean Society of London in 1858. After extensive travels in the Amazon basin, Wallace independently came to the same conclusions as Darwin on the significance of natural selection in driving the diversification of species. Wallace also worked as a natural history specimen collector in Indonesia. Wallace, like Darwin, also read the work of Thomas Malthus, 1766-1834. During an attack of malaria in Indonesia, Wallace made the connection between the Malthusian concept of the struggle for existence and a mechanism for change within populations. From this, Wallace wrote the essay that was eventually presented with Darwin's work in 1858. Who was Darwin's bulldog? Thomas Huxley, 1825-1895, was a staunch supporter of Darwin's work, in fact. Huxley wrote a favorable review of Darwin's On the Origin of Species that appeared soon after its publication. When the firestorm of controversy began after the appearance of Darwin's book, Huxley was ready and able to defend Darwin, whose chronic public reticence about his theories was at that time exacerbated by illness. Huxley's defense of Darwin was so vigorous during a debate with Bishop Samuel Wilberforce, 1805-1873. At the British Association for the Advancement of Science in 1860 that he earned the title Darwin's Bulldog. Who was Darwin's Bulldog? Thomas Huxley 1825 to 1895, was a staunch supporter of Darwin's work, in fact. Huxley wrote a favorable review of Darwin's On the Origin of Species that appeared soon after its publication. When the firestorm of controversy began after the appearance of Darwin's book, Huxley was ready and able to defend Darwin whose chronic public reticence about his theories was at that time exacerbated by illness. Huxley's defense of Darwin was so vigorous during a debate with Bishop Samuel Wilberforce, 1805-1873, at the British Association for the Advancement of Science in 1860 that he earned the title Darwin's Bulldog.